majority of you. Before this video starts, I have some new developments in the Amberverse. First, Emily essentially made a public statement when she unprivated her Instagram account and made a post where she tagged Amber, the caption reads, love over hate, hashtag love wins. And Amber commented, always baby with a kissy emoji. So at this point, Amber is essentially saying I heard all the allegations, saw the proof and I still don't care. Next, last night Alexis's partner commented this comment under Amber's latest TikTok. Furthering a lot of people's suspicion, including mine, that this is all faked and Amber and Alexis are in on this together. So this morning Alexis made a statement on TikTok saying, just wanted to announce that my own partner went behind my back to publicly support and speak to Amberlyn, so I'm now single. Disloyalty to me as my partner is not an option around these parts babe. Someone even let Alexis know that there's suspicion that she and Amber are trolling because of Alexis's partner's comment, and Alexis replies, yeah I wasn't a fan of that so I showed them the door. Today, my partner made a comment on Amber Lynn's TikTok or Instagram or whatever, basically expressing support. Now, I have only been with my ex-partner Chrissy for like two months. It's a long distance relationship and we haven't met in person. So I'm kind of glad this is all coming out now. And they claim that they didn't really know who Amber Lynn was initially, but I'm starting to feel like that is a lie. One thing about me is, as my partner, you are not going to make me look stupid. And you are not going to support me in private and then publicly embarrass me. And you guys want to talk about clout chasing? This right here is a clout chaser. And for the last couple days, they have already been extremely combative towards me because I'm so obsessed with this Amberlynn drama. For you to be so incredibly butthurt about Amberlynn sending me the explicit content that she recently sent me, and then turning around and showing support, um, you're irrelevant and you're fake. How did y'all meet and become friends? When did your friendship start? So when Amberlynn and Jade ended their relationship, um, I was also going through a breakup. Yes, I did reach out to Amberlynn via Instagram and it may have been a romantical situation type deal. But after talking for a couple weeks, I was able to very quickly assess that I could not be in a long-term romantic relationship with Amber. So after I had assessed that Amberlyn and I would not do well as partners, um, my ex-girlfriend and I had decided that we were going to try to make things work. And when I kind of broke things off with Amber um, to try to rekindle my relationship with my ex-girlfriend, um, you can bet your bottom dollar she was super mad. So I guess technically you could say I was the first girl Amberlyn talked to after her relationship with Jade had ended. The reason that I even messaged Amberlyn in the first place is because honestly, I was a viewer and I really didn't think she was gonna respond to me. And then I was so starstruck after she messaged me back that I was like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk to her. I had been watching Amberlyn since like maybe 2018. I don't know, she kind of inspired me. As someone who is also a plus sized woman, um, I just really love to see her representation on a public platform. But anyway, so we decided to remain friends and um, we have been pretty close ever since. Up until um, I made a decision and I set a boundary that if she's going to stay with Emily slash Tommy, um, I'm not going to be her friend. And now it's really too late to ever be able to turn around and go back. I mean, it's gone too far. The next topic I would like to discuss is the infamous crumble cookie gate of 2024. My thumbnail was a clip from a video that Amberlynn had personally sent me. The video starts off by her basically saying, um, okay, babe, like this is a video just for you. And um, this was made for Erica, her former partner, AKA Valentine. And the video initially starts out with her um, clothed and um, just kind of like eating the cookie and reviewing it. And then it very quickly turns into her shirtless, um, still with a bra on, and kind of getting like a little crazy, like having a little crazy moment with the crumble cookie. It was kind of a cinematic masterpiece, I'm not gonna lie to you, but disturbing nonetheless. And when she sent me this video, she literally made me FaceTime her to see my reaction and then proceeded to ask me if I liked it. And this all happened, mind you, on July 31st. So very much while she was still supposedly so in love with Emily slash Tommy. 
the fact that Amber Lynn's former roommate, Eric, messaged me on TikTok. Now, I'm not sure on specific dates, but Eric and Ricky did recently come to visit her. Now, I do understand that this could have been a setup. Like, since I have Amber Lynn and Emily blocked on all of my socials, I could see maybe Amber Lynn reaching out to him to reach out to me. But one thing about me is I don't say things behind people's backs that I wouldn't say to their face. So just in case you're listening to this video and not watching, Eric asked Alexis what caused it all to go so bad with Amber lately and that Amber hasn't been talking to him much lately. And Alexis is saying she can't stand Emily aka Tommy, and that Emily had said she would rather be with her late partner than to be here on earth with her child and Amberlyn, and after that Alexis found Emily to be completely intolerable. Alexis also says she wants Amberlyn to get some therapy and work on herself and get away from Emily, and Eric replies, I don't think that will happen I know she admitted in a video that she ignores red flags and makes excuses for people when she's dating them. Then Alexis says, then Amber can go down the worst path she could have ever possibly taken and have an even more miserable life than she already has. Also, message for Amber. If you move here and the inevitable happens, do not call me. I am not going to be your knight in shining armor and I'm not going to come save you. So I strongly urge you to not move here if you are not 100 billion percent completely sure that Emily slash Tommy is not going to you over. So now I want to get into <laughs> the infamous pumpkin spice buzzball conversation between Amber and I. Now, this conversation took place uh, Saturday night after Amber and I spoke on her now deleted live stream. And after that live stream, um, I had gone to a concert. And while I was there, um, we were texting back and forth. And I thought maybe we could hash things out and maybe reconcile. But this is where she started demanding a public apology for me to both her and Emily. So Amber messages Alexis and says, please read this as if I'm speaking in a very calm tone, probably crying too. I am not trying to be mean at all. I just had a very hard time regulating my emotions during that call on live stream. If I could, I would go back and not call you because that made things worse for me and for Emily when it wasn't needed at all. I'm embarrassed and all I have been doing is fighting for peace for Emily and I, if you want a friendship with me, I want a public apology to the both of us since you made the downfall of our friendship public. That was tough, you know how my mental health has been. I just had thousands of people laugh at me during a BPD episode. Now I will forever be ridiculed for it because it's documented. I'm genuinely hurt and I feel like an idiot. Emily just opened up to me hardcore and she said that I can tell you about it, which might make you relieved actually. Alexis replies, I will think about apologizing to you, but a public apology to her will not ever happen. I know, Amber, I'm so terrible. I have been an absolutely awful friend to you. While I have been sitting here publicly defending you for the last year and trying to help you cover your tracks because you lie all the time and you can't keep any of your stories straight. I sat here willing to tarnish my reputation for you while getting doxxed, while having to quit my main job because of said doxing. Meanwhile, you're cashing in on our friendship and people ostracizing me. And I feel like I am genuinely being nice in this situation because I know enough about Emily to completely ruin what's left of her life. But as I've mentioned before, Tommy is a mother and I know that doesn't come first to her, but um, in my opinion, a child's life and a child's well-being is top priority to me. And speaking on this, I received a DM from Emily's daughter's father's girlfriend, who has expressed very strong concern for the well-being of Emily's child. She has personally asked me to not dox her or leak the conversation, and for now I'm going to respect that. Girls, that's it for part two. Do you still think Alexis and Amber are in on this together to get their coin? Or do you believe everything Alexis is saying thus far? Alexis says there will be a part 3 either tonight or tomorrow, so I will keep an eye out for that, and if there's anything interesting, I will definitely bring you the tea.